What's up everybody? Welcome back to FNG Academy. I just had a quick announcement. I'm proud to say that we've been helping people get selected for three years now. I've been getting a lot of messages about uh, people thanking us and saying that they just graduated from uh, selection and they got selected. Uh, people graduating the Q course. Uh, one of my buddies just sent me a video uh, from the Charlie committee. He asked, if you guys have ever heard of the FNG Academy, raise your hands. And all their hands went up and it just filled me with pride. Um, so part of the way that we do that is making sure that you guys are physically fit and ready for selection. And the way we've been doing that for the past couple years is by sending you to a Green Beret we know and trust, Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. So if you want to get selected, you need to be in the best shape possible and you need a programmer who knows what they're talking about. So go check out Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. Use code word BUCK to get a discount. Tell him we sent you and hook you up. Congrats to everyone who's been getting selected lately and we'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs> Dankeschön. You can lead the horse to water. And sometimes they'll drink it. That was really moving. Thanks. Oh, that's good. It is good. Curtis has left us, but he did leave his beer in the fridge. So. Yeah, we had to drop him off at the airport today because he's a little. little Decided to leave. What's up, guys? Welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. Today I'm drinking a Juicy West Crooked Stave. It's uh, 2010 from Colorado. <laughs> I didn't even read it. 6% alcohol. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is one of the best IPAs I think I've ever tasted. This is a really good IPA. This is delicious. All right, so today we're gonna do uh, Band of Brothers. I think we're on episode two. I love Band of Brothers. This is an amazing show. I love the intros. They get me all fired up when you have the old vets. Kurt and I were talking about this uh, before. It's like, it just makes it feel like crazy that they're still alive, they're still here and you could see the faces of the people that went through all this because when you're watching the show it's like yeah i know it happened but that's you you just feel so far removed from it, it doesn't feel real so let's jump into this episode guys uh we do have to censor this not that we're going to be cussing a ton probably in this one but if you like the uncensored versions go check it out at the paid channel uh the fngacademy.com it's a mentor program that we do tier one is uh one-on-one -on -one coaching with the green beret tier two is group coaching and tier three is exclusive content to include uncensored versions of this show podcasts that we do um and other things that we'll Put on there that we're not going to release on the main channel so if you want some extra content and you just want to help us out so we can continue to grow the channel and grow the business um, to give back to the special operations community and help them get selected then please consider being a tier three member it helps us a lot That is absolutely terrifying. Yeah, dude. Just jumping alone, like with, just for training is terrifying. Yeah. And then to have to do it into combat is terrifying once you land, but now you're getting shot out of the damn sky. Insane. And just then, the visuals. It's terrifying, so terrifying. And then the plane is banking, trying to avoid, and you're standing there holding your static line, which is attached to your chute, which is attached to the bird, falling all over the place. You're just standing. It's not like you have anything to hold on to. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult enough as the plane barely moves. I can't even imagine staying there while it's banking like that. And then potentially as it banks and you fall, if it pulls your chute at all, mm. like it, it's, it may not pull it all the way out, but it could still mess up your, your jump. And like, cause depending on how far you fall, it could pull some of your chute out of your pack. It's just terrifying. It's absolutely insane to me to think about this situation and standing in that bird like that obviously this one gets shot down they all die but the other one people are getting hit and then having to jump dude just that's a horrific experience i could not imagine i hate jumping as it is this is like level 10 scary that's raincoat you got a raincoat yeah
about seven kilometers away from our objective. This captain's so damn squared away, it's unbelievable. Like he's linking up with these guys as he's finding them. Mm -hmm. One guy saw a sign. He, I don't know if he used a button from his pants. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it was to create a makeshift um, uh, compass. Mm -hmm. And then just looked at the map, figured out where they were. I'm <laughs> shocked that they're only seven clicks away from their objective. Mm -hmm. That's surprisingly close. They got lucky to get that close considering their jump conditions. Um, but this captain is just so squared away. This is exactly what you want out of a leader. It's somebody that's like, what's the problem? How do we fix it? There's no panicking isn't right. going to do you any good. Get mad. You know, f you just have to think about what's next. How could we make the situation the best case scenario? And then he's, he remains his tactics all the time. Raincoat over him so no one sees him white lighting as he's checking the map. Um, being able to make that compass on the fly like that, it's, it's, he's just Johnny on the spot, man. How often do we have uh, do we have leadership like that not be able to keep it together in a stressful situation? Uh, it's, it's, you'd be surprised. It's pretty pretty rare. I mean, pretty regular. It happens quite a bit. Mm. But usually, hopefully, you work those guys out right. before it, you know. But we have so many soldiers. There's a lot of great ones and a lot of bad ones. Getting promoted in the military is not like the best ones get promoted. A lot of times, it's just how long you've been in. So you just make time so, and you make okay, rank. So, yeah. And so guys will get put in these positions that didn't actually earn it. When I joined, I got to my unit, I had to stand up parade rest for a sergeant, and that sergeant ended up being so ate up, he got demoted on deployment to private. I got promoted to sergeant. By the time I got back from deployment, he was standing at parade rest for me. Wow. So the, the captain told him to wait for his command. He's going to signal the order when to fire. Mm. So he was gonna give the command. He's just waiting for them to make sure they're in the kill zone and mm -hmm. they all have good shots. Cause you could see he initiated a little early. So then they're having to like tag people in the back after right. the fact. If he would have waited for them a little more, they could have clean swiped all of them. Right. And everyone could have gotten a fight at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, but a little backstory is his brother got killed. And so he's looking for revenge. Oh, his brother's, this guy? Okay. Yeah, his brother's a soldier. Cause this is a sergeant. His brother's soldier got killed. So he just wanted a piece of that ass. And so he just let him have just it. Just went after it. Yeah. See his leg? Yeah. It's all bent back. Yeah. All right, pause. So that was likely the result of uh, a bad exit mm -hmm. from just too high speeds. Maybe he fell out as they banked. Um, but once your, your, once your parachute gets pulled, all your, what your risers are, all those lines connecting your parachute to your back. Mm -hmm. And so your, his leg got caught in the riser. And then so when his parachute fully extended, it snapped his leg. That's so like in free fall, I had this, had this one instance. So as you're doing a free fall jump, you're flying, you pull, and then you, you have a bubble of air on your back so that could prevent your parachute from actually extending. Mm -hmm. So they always teach you to do a shoulder dip and that's to get that bubble of air to ride off. Okay. And then it'll pull your pre-shoot and so your chute will uh, come out. Okay. Well, the problem is as a student, I would I dipped too hard one time on that pre-shoot and he they film every jump so oh, that okay. way you could analyze yourself and so I was going I pulled and I did a dip too hard and it made my back foot go up almost like a scorpion mm -hmm. so as the risers were coming out my foot touched them oh sh and he was like dude don't dip your shoulder that hard like it's just a little dip so if it catches your leg it's just gonna yank it up it could potentially just yank my leg up with it Ugh. and I'd be in real bad shape. It's crazy that the parameters for like life and death are so small, even when you're training. Yeah. Right. So it's like you don't have this huge buffer of safety when they're training somebody. It's not like virtual, or it's not in this controlled environment where you know the person you're training is fine. It's like you're sending them out there to train, 
and they might die right because the I don't know the word I'm looking for is the margin for error is mm -hmm. still so small. Yeah, and there's training accidents, training deaths happen all the time. I can imagine with yeah. with that small of a mistake being able to take you out like that. Yeah. You know, somebody's bound to dip way too hard. Where are you from, son? Eugene, Oregon. Eugene? You gotta be kidding me. Popeye, did you hear this? I'm from Astoria. What say? Yeah, Orange Street. What gives? What are you doing in a crowd uniform? Volksdeutsche. Come again? My family answered the call. All true Aryans should return to the fatherland. Join up in 41. So they're coming across um, uh, German POWs that they've captured. Oh, okay. I and was like, why are they talking to them like that, not killing them? And so they're POWs now. And so he was like, enjoy the war. Where are you from? And he was like, Oregon. And he was like, what? And he said, I didn't know that that was a thing. That he's, They said that their, his, their parents were German and that all Aryans, true Aryans, should return to the fatherland to fight for their country. So he grew up in the United States yep. and then went back to Germany to fight the United States. Yep. And is now just having a conversation with somebody who's from the same place he is. Yep. <laughs> Dude, that's a trip. And then they ended up assassinating, killing all of them. As he's walking away. All the POWs? Yeah. Oh, so shit. as he's walking away, it was like, do, 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 do. So that was just a perfect display of small unit tactics and that officer being, again, just so squared away. So the Germans have a dug in position and the officer is just trying to maneuver his men to capture those positions. But mm -hmm. the dug in uh, artillery, uh, artillery position is also protected by MG42s, which is a German uh, automatic rifle. Mm -hmm. and that thing's insane. It will just clean house. Okay. Um, so they have to figure out how to maneuver against this dug in force and blow up all the artillery. Okay. So it's just a, it's just using, pretty much everyone's on the same playing field, but you have, just have to use tactics and use your wits to outmaneuver the enemy. Mm -hmm. And if you make a good plan, you could win. You make a bad plan, it's game over. Mm -hmm. And so I just think small unit tactics are awesome and you can really get obsessed with them because it's so cool because you're, it's not like war that we're in now, we're always a, have a, a higher advantage. Right. It's a level playing field. So it's just a chess match. It's a chess match. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what it is. You, you have to outsmart them. Fucking G stacking. Shit. I'm sorry, shit. Screw you. Grenade. No, Joey, pull it up, pull it up. One lucky bastard, Joe. Huh. I love that. He's one, you one lucky bastard, Joe. <laughs> That's war. Yeah. We've talked about it so many times. I, I was so hard on myself when I first got into, finally got some combat over stupid decisions or things going not the way we planned. Um, but you come to realize real quick that that's just how war is. So you, sometimes you just get really lucky. Sometimes you get really unlucky. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you're in the wrong place at the wrong time and get hit. And yeah. Other times you that that exact spot just was the perfect place and you couldn't have avoided any better. Hey, Sarge! I'm looking for battalion headquarters! Are you kidding? It's back down the way! We know it! Jeez. Fire in the hole! TNT! Just another genius move by the captain. Mm -hmm. It's like you're full, full fledged combat, trying to you know accomplish your mission. You got people dying next to you, and you take the time to see intel and grab it. Mm -hmm. Most people would be like, I don't give a shit what that says. I'm trying not to get shot in the head. Right. But this captain is always thinking about the next step, the next step. If oh, well, we could use this. I don't know what it is. Maybe I don't recognize it right now. Right. But this could potentially help us in the future. He's always thinking about the future instead of just being caught up in the right here and the right now. Yeah. 
And that dude just so squared away. It's just another ability to be able to perform under pressure, man. Right. And that's the, and fearing for your life has to be the, the greatest amount of pressure you mm -hmm. can ever experience. You literally think you're gonna die. How can you possibly think about anything else? Right. It's been a day of first. Don't you think, Garnier? Yes, sir. Carry on. Right, sir. Oh, Sergeant? Sir. I'm not a Quaker. <laughs> Again, all about the captain. So much greatness happened right there. So he shows up, his boys are passing around some drink, cooking some food. They're having boys time. They mm -hmm. need this. It's decompression time. Right. He knows that it's important to bond with his guys, but he also knows that it's not. It's important to give them their space. Right. So he shows up. They hand him a drink, and he says, "Oh, he don't drink." It's one more way to separate him from them. Right. So, knowing that, he takes a drink for the first time in his life. Wow. Because he has the awareness to know that that drink is bonding to them, yeah. and you can't. Be, you can't lead these men and then separate yourself like that. Right. But then also the final smart decision that he makes is he knows when to fucking leave. Yeah. Because no one wants to have a drink and, you know, eat food and, and bond and talk shit with your fucking commanding officer. <laughs> so you got to know when to get out, pump fists, you know, have a drink, share a drink with them, and then fucking leave. Yeah. And so the fact that he just understands this, it just, it just shows his emotional IQ and his emotional intelligence on understanding, you know, men and how to lead them and how to appreciate, you know, the intricacies of leading men, sure. especially not being so mad at the sergeant for disobeying an order. Right. And like, that was another thing they did right there. He just, hey man, I heard what you talk shit about me and I know we're cool. Just so you know, I heard it and we're cool. It's not, I'm not a Quaker. Oh, and okay, it, yeah. he crushed all of that yeah. potential beef. And then the sergeant gave him the nod when he asked him if he's gonna be his commanding officer giving the officer, letting the, the captain know that, um, is he a lieutenant? Sergeant. Does, no, the lieutenant. Is he a captain? Oh, I no. thought he got promoted captain already. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. So either way, lieutenant captain, letting him know that he approves of him now, even though they had beef earlier. Yeah. So just so much greatness happened within a one minute interaction. Right. And it's just all about having a good emotional IQ. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that episode of Beers and Breakdowns. Uh, Band of Brothers, I think, is one of the best shows. I'm loving it right now. Again, I don't typically watch these because war stuff just stresses me out. Um, but because of the show, you guys have kind of forced me into it, and I am loving what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. I love all these, these shows, Band of Brothers, Generation Kill, um, The Pacific. They're so badass, mm -hmm. and I'm so happy that I'm actually like having to watch them because I'm loving the shit out of them. I get a really cool perspective because I get to have guys tell me, hey, this is actually accurate, which makes any show that I'm watching infinitely more interesting to me to watch because they're giving the stamp of approval saying, hey, this is actually a pretty accurate show. So if I'm watching it, I'm essentially watching. It almost feels like watching a camera in place somewhere else in something that took place because these are so well done. So it, it makes me a lot more interested to watch these as yeah. where I normally wouldn't, you know what I mean? But Cool, if you guys made it this far, please do us a favor, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, leave a comment. Guys, can't tell you how important that is. It keeps us going, it keeps the, the content getting out there and more viewers and more subscribers just help us to grow, which helps us to give back to the special operations community on our mission to get as many people selected as possible. We're here to help you get selected like no one else out there. We promise you that, and it's your viewership that helps us accomplish that mission. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys. We'll see you on the next one.